Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna. So we'll begin reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 3, Chapter 26, Text 28. You know, what comes to my mind again and again with this incident is the bhajan is then Prabhupada would also say that our time in this material world is very temporary. You know, we, we never know when what, what happens in this material world. Bhagavatam also says, padam padam yatve padam. There's danger at every step. At any step, we can uh, give up our life. And our life is like a drop of water on the uh, leaf of a lotus. At any moment, that drop of water can go back into the water because the leaf of the lotus is on the water, right? So it can, it's like a very temporary situation. Just brings to mind that, yes, our position here is very temporary, you know? Why don't we try to understand this and really make efforts to go back home, back to Godhead? You know, but then I guess the attachment is so strong to the material energy. You know, it gets difficult. But it, it, that, well, that's what comes to the mind. That Yes, really, Padam Padam Yatve Padam. Bhagavatam says that. Danger at any moment. And the only shelter is um, the lotus feet of Lord Krishna. Yes, it's, I just wanted to share that. Thank you. Very true. True, right? Yeah. Yeah, very true. The, the shelter is only lotus feet of Lord Krishna. What can we do? You know, we, yeah. So we should really try, really try to get out of here. Prabhupada would say, you know, make this life your last life. Get out of here. So, yeah. So we'll even, continue. Even if that, like what you said, that we should try to get out and somehow by mistake, if like now we are doing and somehow by mistake, if like a one day or two day we, you know, get into the material pang, it is very strong, very strong. Yeah, we are in the material. <laughs> no, like, like this moment is our spiritual moment, what oh, yeah. we are doing right now. Yeah, but then after yeah. that, we are in the material pang. And that is yeah. very, very, very strong. Yeah, very, yeah. It is very, it's like. What we read here, we, we have to try to apply, but then we forget and we behave in our same animal instinct. Yeah, the same, so true. I have felt that myself. For me, I'm talking that, yes, I try my best and I read, I want to apply, but then, so we have to pray to Krishna that please help us behave in that way, not make us a good instrument. It is so important. Yeah. So true. Yeah, so true. The attachment is so strong to this so material strong. energy. Yeah, that's why we've been here, able to be here for millions of lives, you know. Imagine millions of lifetimes you have been able to be here. So that attachment is too deep. Mm -hmm. The only shelter is hearing and chanting. Lotus feet of Krishna. Like, I'm sorry, I just wanted to share this instant that I, I went to a friend, like, and then there was some rasgulla, rasmalai, and how greedy I took two or three, and there was another person they didn't get any, and I still just ate. So I'm just telling that we know we should share why we are not, and then, yes, I knew that the guest is going to bring more. There is more in the house. But still, I'm just telling that how greedy, this is such a small thing. There are so big, big things. And we forget and we behave in the same animal instinct. This is not you. Yeah. So true. Yeah, we, so true. We behave in the same way. So I feel that we have to really work very, 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 pray very hard. And work yeah. very hard pray. in the spiritual yeah. life. Yeah. We should. Otherwise, yeah. it's very difficult. We won't be able to get out. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So we'll 
continue we'll yeah, begin the reading yes, thank so. you for your sharing 28 yad vidur hi aniruddhakyam rishikanam adishwaram shara den devara shamyam samradayam yogi bihi shane translation and purport by his divine grace ac bhaktivedanta samishla prabhupad the mind of the living entity is known by the name of Lord Anirudh, the supreme ruler of the senses. He possesses a bluish-black form resembling a lotus flower growing in the autumn. He is found slowly by the yogis. So, as we have been hearing that the deity of the mind is Lord Anirudh. Lord Anirudh, the supreme ruler of the senses. The mind is the king of the senses. The mind is known as the sixth sense, the king, or the ruler of the senses. And Lord Anirudh's form is being described as bluish black, like a lotus flower in the autumn. And the yogis are meditating on him. He's slowly found, he's found slowly by the yogis. The system of yoga entails controlling the mind and the lord of the mind is Anirudh. It is stated that Anirudh is four-handed with Sudarshan, Chakra, Conchal, Club, and Lotus Flower. Uh, there are 24 forms of Vishnu, each differently named. Among these 24 forms, Sankarshan, Anirudh, Pradyumna, and Vasudev are depicted very nicely in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, where it is stated that Anirudh is worshipped by the yogis. Meditation upon voidness is a modern invention of the fertile brain of some speculator. So meditation on some, some light or meditation on some on nothing or something, that is just modern invention. It's not according to the scriptures. It is somebody's imagination. Oh yes, we could do that. So at some point of time, somebody started that practice speculating speculating actually the process of yoga meditation as prescribed in this verse should be fixed upon the form of anirudh meditating on anirudh one can become free from the agitation of acceptance and rejection when one's mind is fixed upon anirudh one gradually becomes god realized he approaches the pure status of krishna consciousness which is the ultimate goal of yoga so anirudh is can help us to control our mind, the, the function of the mind we heard yesterday was accepting and rejecting. Our mind says, oh, this is a good situation. And so this situation should not change. And I'm going to work very hard so that this situation does not change. And another situation, our mind says, no, this is a horrible situation. How can it be? I need to get out of here. So that's what the whole thing of the mind, because the soul is not affected, right? Actually, we, the, we are the soul. So we are never affected, but it's with the mind that we get affected, that this is a good situation. This is not a good situation as we were speaking of this point now. So we are so affected by it. We are saying, no, it's such a horrible situation. He's suffering, what's happening? You know, the, the, the soul is okay, but, but the, the, with, the, with our mind, we are like, no, 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 it's, it, it, this is not a good situation at all. So it's the mind that the mind, we need to fix it on the Lord. And the Lord of the mind is Anirudh. And he can help us to gradually, gradually become Krishna conscious. That is our true status. Our true consciousness is Krishna conscious, consciousness. And that is the goal of yoga. Goal of yoga is not void, it's not nothing it's not light no goal of yoga is to realize the form of the lord as as we saw we were hearing Kar, kardamamani he meditated for 10000 years and then he could see the lord the lord came in front of him spoke to him dhruva maharaj he did meditation he was uh, meditating on the form of the lord in his heart and the same lord in the heart he came and stood in front of him and was speaking to him so that is the goal of meditation. Sorry, Air, what they're trying to say about the people that who meditate on, on like light or something, is it? 
They are saying that somebody who says that you can meditate on a void, that there is nothing. nothing. You meditate yeah. on nothing. Or you meditate on a candle. Or, you know, some oh. people say that, right? You meditate oh, on a yeah. candle or mm -hmm. you meditate on a uh, voidness. This is mm. modern invention of mm. the fertile brain. It's not in the anywhere in the Vedic okay. scripture. Okay. Okay. It's not a Vedic practice. So it's not, uh, it's not going to give us perfection. Okay. And here it says Anirudh, Lord Anirudh means, does it also mean same as Lord Narayan? Because yes. Narayan also is four-handed, no? Yes, yes. Same form, yes. right? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, so the Chaturvyuha forms are all Narayan forms. And okay. they are named differently. Sankarshan, Anirudh, Pradyumna, and uh, Vasudev. Huh? Could so, you and then I forgot about that. Sankarshan, he's the Lord yeah. for uh, yeah. Sankarshan. We said false ego, false ego, false ego. yeah. And he's the Lord of false. Pradyumna was the Lord of intelligence, Lord of intelligence. intelligence. Anirudh is the Lord of the mind, and uh, Vasudev, pure consciousness, oh. pure consciousness. That's what we were hearing in this section of the Bhagavatam. Right. Yeah. Thank you. So then, reading on. Teja satu vikurvana buddhi tattvam abhuti sati abhut sati dravya svurana vigyanam indriyanam anugraha By transformation of the false ego and passion, intelligence takes birth. Oh, virtuous lady. Now we may say, oh, mind was created by a false ego in the mode of goodness, whereas mind seems to be passionate. But he, that's what we heard. False ego with goodness brings about the mind. Now, false ego with passion, with the mode of passion, intelligence is taking birth. The functions of intelligence are to help in ascertaining the nature of objects when they come into view and to help the senses to help the senses and to, to, this, to ascertain the nature of the um, nature of the objects. Intelligence is the discriminating power to understand an object and it helps the senses make choices. Therefore, intelligence is supposed to be the master of the senses. The perfection of intelligence is attained when one becomes fixed in the activities of Krishna consciousness. By the proper use of intelligence, one's consciousness is expanded and the ultimate expansion of consciousness is Krishna consciousness. So here now we just heard that the proper uh, control of the mind can bring us to Krishna consciousness. Now proper use of intelligence can bring us to Krishna consciousness. By intelligence, we are trying to decide that, you know, uh, to, to help us make choices. Intelligence is supposed to be the master of the mind. And the soul is supposed to be the master of the intelligence. It's I'm buddhi, sorry. Right? Intelligence buddhi. is right. buddhi. Yes, buddhi. So it is buddhi is supposed to be the master of the man, of the mind. Mm. And it's it's the buddhi who should help us to make the correct choices. You know, let me make, let me choose Krishna instead of. Maya. But what has happened is that we are not controlling anything. No control of mind, no control of senses. So the senses drive us, oh, do this, you'll feel nice. And the mind also says, yes, yes, you'll feel very good when you do this. So wherever the mind is driving, we are just going there. Like the horses, the senses, wherever the senses are taking us, we are just going there. And we don't know what's happening. But actually, it should be that with our intelligence, we control our mind. And then with the mind, we control the senses. That can help us bring to perfection of intelligence, Krishna consciousness. Mm -hmm. And Krishna another, says in Bhagavad Gita, I'm sorry. Oh yeah, another thing I think I've heard that with the mind, the thought comes. And then yes. from the thought, 
then the buddhi works like you know intelligence whether you should go for it or no and then the action happens the action takes place right mm. yes ha yes. hare krishna hare krishna usko hai na hindi mein bolte hain vivek vivek buddhi wo buddhi jo vivek sahi sahi ka nirnay karti hai hmm विवेक का इंग्लिश में कोई वर्ड ही नहीं है मैं बहुत बहुत टाइम से ढूंढ रही हूँ तो सही बुद्धि विवेक बोलेंगे पर बुद्धि बुद्धि हमेशा हमेशा अच्छी नहीं होती है निर्णय करने वाली बुद्धि जो डिसीजन अच्छा डिसीजन ले विवेक पूर्ण बुद्धि ओके Yeah, that makes sense. Thank you. Or jo achhi intelligence hai, wo hai to help mm-hmm. us choose mm-hmm. Krishna. Krishna. That is proper use of intelligence. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So the function of the mind, Krishna says, we'll be reading. We are on the sixth chapter. So the function of the mind is thinking, feeling, and willing. Thinking. Oh, this is. This I'll do this. I'll feel very. I'll it will be very good. Then we start feeling. Oh, I'll feel like this, you know. When when it comes to feeling, then we are gonna do it. It becomes very difficult to stop the mind at that moment. When it's only at the thought, we can still try to stop it. But when we start putting our feelings in that thought, then the mind takes us for a drive, and then we are forced to act on it. so yeah that that's the function of the mind thinking feeling and willing let's we'll read this and let's see how how much are we able to read samshayo athabe par ya sho nischaya smritir eva cha swapa iti uchyate buddhe lakshanam vrittita prathak doubt misapprehension correct apprehension memory and sleep as determined by their different functions are said to be the distinct characteristics of intelligence doubt is one of the important functions of intelligence blind acceptance of something does not give evidence of intelligence therefore the word shamshaya is very important in order to cultivate intelligence one should be doubtful in the beginning but doubting is not very favorable when information is received from the proper source in bhagavad gita the lord says that doubting the words of the authority is the cause of destruction so doubt taking everything with a grain of salt which that is the proper use of intelligence and how can we build our intelligence how can we purify our intelligence rather let's say that right now our intelligence has become materially contaminated how can we uh, purify the intelligence by association yes. with devotees yes very nice good by and reading by reading that's the right. shastras yes and listening reading, from the yeah. in parampara yeah when we are reading the the we are hearing the shastra or reading the shastra that's when our intelligence gets purified and so when we are hearing the shastra that knowledge we should accept it without a doubt but everything else which is not coming from shastra we should be doubtful about it this is what we are trying to understand that is proper use of intelligence so when we are hearing krishna's words in bhagavad gita that we should not doubt because he is god why is he going to cheat us you know that and krishna says for the doubting soul there is uh what is it neither peace in this life or in the next something to that effect so when we are hearing the shastra we should not doubt but when we are hearing other than the shastra always we should doubt that try to understand is somebody telling me the truth or what what is it is it based in the shastra or no So, so as this where this comes right sadhu guru and shastra and shastra that's right right to see yes. if it tallies all the three then you are in the right like you are listening mm. to the right thing correct yes that's right 
Excellent. Yes. That's the test. Sadhu, Guru, and Shastra. Yeah. So because our minds are very fertile, you know, we are very good in imagination. We can just make up anything and start thinking it's true. And there might be a few other people who also will encourage us and they will also start thinking it's true. But yeah, it might we be get totally carried away. Different. We get carried away. Yeah. And there might be a group of people who encourage us in this care, getting carried away. And we really get bewildered and they get bewildered and, you know, very far away from the truth. So, yes, as you rightly said, the test is sadhu, guru, and shastra. Yeah, sadhu, guru, shastra. So, the. This is this verse is also an intelligence. Maybe we can just read it. As described in the Patanjali Yoga system, Praman, Viparya, Vikalpa, Nidra, Smiteha. By intelligence only, one can understand things as they are. By intelligence only, one can understand whether or not he is the body. The study to determine whether one's identity is spiritual or material begins in doubt. Uh, so, it's by intelligence. At one point, we will come to think, oh, am I the body or am I the soul? That is proper use of intelligence. When one is able to analyze his actual position, the false identification with the body is detected. Analyze his actual position and we are able to understand, oh, I am truly the soul. I'm, you know, we are able to really understand that. Then we will understand, oh, I'm thinking I'm the body, but that's not right. This is vipar yasa. When false identification is detected, then real identification can be understood. Real understanding is described here as nischaya or proved experimental knowledge. Now we can see proved experimental knowledge, knowledge which has been proven. That is scientific knowledge. Knowledge which can be put into practical application. That is scientific knowledge. And that is what is needed. That's the reason it's called science of self-realization. Science of Krishna consciousness. Why? Because you, you apply it and you will get the result. We apply this uh, devotional service and we will become Krishna conscious. There's no doubt about it. This experimental knowledge can be achieved when one has understood the false knowledge. By experimental or proved knowledge, one can understand that he is not the body, but spirit soul. So then, so uh, this is Patanjali Yoga system is saying that by intelligence, one can understand the difference between body and spirit. That's the proper use of intelligence. And yeah, we can continue. Huh? I think it's only one para. Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, smriti means memory and swapa means sleep. Sleep is also necessary to keep the intelligence in working order. If there is no sleep, the brain cannot work nicely. I'm not sure if you all have had this experience. If you can't sleep, you can't work. I've had that experience. You know? Yeah, your brain Sometimes, doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. True. True. yeah. In Bhagavad Gita, it is especially mentioned that persons who regulate eating, sleeping, and other necessities of the body in the proper proportion become very successful in the yoga process. Just yesterday, we were hearing Krishna telling Arjuna, Oh, Arjun, you eat, don't eat too much, don't eat too little. Don't sleep too, too much, don't sleep too little. Why? So the body can be properly maintained and then can focus, can go on in Krishna consciousness. There are some of the aspects of the analytical study of intelligence as described in both the Patanjali Yoga system and the Sankhya philosophy system of Kapila Dev in Srimad Bhagavatam. So we can see Patanjali Yoga and Sankhya Yoga that they have some kind of uh, common grounds. They have this common uh, grounds of uh, regarding to intelligence. Sankhya philosophy, what we are hearing in Bhagavatam is devotional service. So we'll end here for today. Did you, did you want to add anything? No. 
Okay, thank you so much for listening and joining in and all your prayers. Have a great weekend. Um, see you tomorrow. Shrimad Bhagavatam ki jai, Shla Prabhupada ki jai, Gaur Bhaktavindya ki jai. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.